People with years of experience with diabetes are often experts at checking their blood sugar. If you're watching this as a person who was diagnosed a long time ago, you might be thinking, why is David making a video on how to check your blood sugar? But for everyone who's ever been diagnosed, there was a moment in time where they were sitting there with that glucose meter, nervously getting ready to use it for the first time. Well, people are diagnosed with diabetes every single day, and every day for someone, it's their first time checking their sugar. And today, if you're that person, this Sugar High video is for you. Welcome to Sugar High guys. Today we're covering one of the most basic fundamentals of diabetes management, how to check your blood sugar. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm a certified endocrine and diabetes PA in Southern California, and Sugar High is a place where you can come for relatable and reliable diabetes information that's always easy to understand. Checking your blood sugar is actually a lot more simple than it might seem. Once you've done it a few times, you're gonna realize that it wasn't nearly as hard as you might've thought, and it doesn't hurt nearly as much as you might've expected. People check their blood sugar with a lot of different frequencies and at different times of the day based on their own specific needs and directions of their healthcare providers. This video is gonna cover the basic process of checking your blood glucose, but as far as when and how often you personally should check, that's gonna be between you and your own healthcare provider to decide. The main reason we check our blood glucose is because it's the best way to keep an eye on how well we're doing at managing diabetes. It's a good thing for you to know if your blood sugar levels are in the target range or if they're going too high. It helps you to know how certain foods affect your glucose so that you can learn more about what to eat and what you might want to cut back on. And it also helps to keep you safe by identifying and recording hypoglycemia and allows you to track your sugar as you bring it back up to normal. But your glucose meter can also be for your doctor. Not everybody does this, but a lot of healthcare providers, including me, will look at the recordings from your glucose meter in order to get more insight as to what's going on day by day. If we need to make a medication change, I might choose one medication if your morning sugars are higher, but I might choose a different medication or even just give dietary counseling if your afternoon or evening sugars are higher. Many glucose meters can have their readings downloaded onto a computer or uploaded to a cloud portal, and looking at that spread of readings all in one place really does help me to know what your specific needs are in a way that an A1C level just can't. By the way, can I just say how incredible it is that we have this technology available? Glucose meters are something that we kind of take for granted, but it really wasn't that long ago that these things didn't even exist. I mean, if you think about it, this used to be strictly a laboratory test. It would take days to get the results back. When they first started making home glucose meters, they were small enough to fit in your house instead of having to go to a lab, but they were still bigger than what you'd really want to carry around with you. And the results took like five or 10 minutes to come back on the machine. Now this thing is so small that it fits in your pocket or your purse and you can have the results within five seconds. It's really pretty amazing when you think about it. All right, all of these meters pretty much work in the same way. There's a machine and then there's a test strip with a, de with a designated spot where the blood drop gets placed and then a screen that shows the results. That's pretty much it. Anything else that a glucose meter does is just extra. Most of them will calculate like a monthly or a weekly averages and some of them even have like Bluetooth capabilities so that it'll send the results straight to your phone or a cloud-based portal where they can be reported back to your doctor. Some of them will even plot out little graphs where you can see the glucose readings in graphic form rather than just a number. But as far as the basic functionality of it, it really is just as simple as putting in the strip, adding a drop of blood and getting a result. When you open up the box for the first time, you're gonna notice that it usually comes uh, packaged with this carrying pouch. And that's kind of nice because it lets you keep the meter and all of your supplies together in one place that could be dropped in your purse or left in a desk drawer or take it wherever you need the meter to be. It'll usually come with some lancets and some of them come with some starter strips to get you going. But for ongoing use, you're gonna to need to get more strips and lancets to keep going. You don't need a prescription to buy test strips or lancets, but depending on the brand, they can get pretty expensive. So if you want your insurance to pay for it instead of you paying cash, try to get a prescription from your healthcare provider because your insurance probably won't cover it unless it's prescribed. By the way, if you're getting it through your insurance, there's a good chance that there's only certain brands or models that your plan covers, so you may not necessarily be able to pick whichever meter you want. 
Okay, one thing that I would recommend doing before getting started is to check the date and the time on your meter. They put a battery in at the factory and they set the date and the time before shipping it out. So if you take a look at the settings, you'll probably notice that the date is right, but depending on what time zone you live, if you live in a different time zone than where this thing was made, then you'll probably notice that the hours uh, and the actual time might be off by an hour or three. The process of setting the date and the time is different for each meter, but it will come with an instruction booklet that explains how to set it. To be honest, some models are simple enough to where you can just figure it out by playing with this thing a little bit without even checking the instructions. Now, when you're ready to check your sugar, the first step is to make sure that your skin is clean. If bacteria gets under the skin in just the right way, that can cause an infection and we don't want that. If you've ever watched them do this in your doctor's office or if you watch some other video demonstrations on this, you're probably gonna see them using like alcohol swabs like this uh, to clean the skin. And you can do that if you want, but honestly, you really don't need alcohol. Simple soap and water under the faucet does a great job at cleaning your skin and that's all you actually need. In my opinion, these alcohol swabs are handy for when you're out and about and you need to check your sugar in a place where you can't like immediately wash your hands. But if you're at home, this is dumb. Don't, you don't need this, save your money. Okay, so these are called lancets. Lancets are just another word for cute little needles. And most meters are gonna come with a spring-loaded device that the lancets fit into in order to let you get the needle in and out as fast as possible in order to minimize the pain. Now, in reality, all you need to poke your finger is this, okay? I can't tell you how many times my patients have come back and gone like a month without checking their sugar because the lancing device broke. But if you really want to check your sugar, if you are concerned, like if you have hypoglycemia and you want to check your sugar, all you really need to do is use this because all you need is a drop of blood. Yeah, it's not going to be as comfortable, but if you were really concerned about checking your blood glucose, your meter will still work even if you just freehand poke with this thing. The lancing device is going to look different depending on the manufacturer, but there's always going to be some sort of a cap that comes off that allows you to put the lancet inside. So you just stick it right in there and it'll fit snugly into place. And when you push it down, that usually locks it and gets it cocked for the first time. We're going to twist this little cap off that's going to expose the tiny little needle. And if you take a look at that sucker, he's so small that you can probably barely even see him. And when we put the cap back on, it'll click into place and this thing's now ready to go. Now they're also always gonna have some sort of a depth gauge here where you can like dial it in to decide how deep you want it to poke. Nobody wants to get stuck any deeper than necessary, but some people do have thicker skin than others. So what I would recommend is start at the lowest setting and then gradually work up if you need to, if you're not able to get a good drop of blood on the lower settings. So now this is ready to go, we'll set it aside and we're gonna take a strip out of the canister. You want to keep these canisters closed because they're sensitive to temperature and moisture, so they keep them in this little can to keep them from going bad. Now you're going to notice that when you take a strip out on one end of it, there's going to be a little electronic probe, and then on the other side, there will be some sort of a line. Okay. Now these might look different depending on who makes them. Here's another company. These strips go with this meter, and if you look at these guys, they look a little different. But you can see how there's electronics on one side and then the little sensing device on the other side. Now, as you can probably guess, the electronics go into the meter and the little line is where the blood drop gets applied. They're usually gonna make it pretty obvious as far as what side goes up. Like you can see, for example, on this one, they have words printed on there. This one doesn't have any words printed on it, but on one side you have a line and on the other side, there's nothing. So if you see any kind of indication about where the blood goes, that's the side that goes up. You don't normally need to turn the meter on before you insert the strip. Inserting the strip will normally turn the machine on all by itself. Before you poke your finger though, make sure that the meter recognizes the strip and that it's ready to go. It'll usually give you an indication like a little flashing drop of blood like this, or it might even say words, say apply blood. That's there to let you know that this thing is ready. If you don't get that, you can try removing the strip and then reinserting it and see if that works, or just try a new strip altogether. Sometimes you do get a bad strip. Different strips are gonna take the blood in different places, but very few strips need you to put the blood drop on top of the strip. They used to work that way a long time ago, but nowadays they almost all get applied to the tip of the line. The idea is that you're gonna to touch the tip of this mark to the surface of the blood, and then the blood is going to get soaked up inside. Once the blood's inside that strip, it's gonna mix with some chemicals that are embedded in the strip and the electronics are gonna make it work so that it reads your glucose and then it'll feed the information back to the machine. But if you just put the blood drop on top, there's a good chance that not enough of it's gonna get inside the strip and you're gonna get an error message. That might make you think that the machine's broken. 
A lot of people have come and told me that they need a new machine because theirs is broken, but it turns out that they were just adding the blood drop to the wrong place. So you can see how there's a couple of different options when it comes to these strips. Take a look at the line so that you know where the blood drop gets applied. This one, the line comes directly out to the tip and you would put the blood drop right on there. On this one, the line goes across and uh, there's a couple of them that work this way. And on this one, you can apply the blood drop to either side, one side or the other. But, but what you wouldn't want to do is put it on the tip because there's no sensor there. It has to go in this line. Okay, so I've washed my hands. I have my lancet loaded and ready to go. I'm gonna have a little cotton ball that I can put pressure on the finger after it's done. You can use a paper towel or a Kleenex or whatever you want, if you, but if you don't want bruises on your fingers, the best way to prevent that is to put direct pressure on it after you're finished. Now, realistically, anywhere you poke your finger is gonna work. All we really need is blood, but as far as where to poke though, there's certain places that are gonna hurt less than others. Your fingertip on the pad has a ton of nerve endings and probably gonna hurt a little bit more if you hit it here. I would recommend starting on a finger that you don't use all that often, like your ring finger or your middle finger, and press the opening of the lancing device against this side part of your finger. There's gonna be some sort of cocking device on it that you can pull back in order to make sure that it's locked and loaded. And then if you push the hole against the fleshy part of the finger right here on the side, all you gotta do is press the button. Now I barely even felt that. So I'm gonna give a little bit of a squeeze to get the blood drop out. If you, you don't have to squeeze too hard, but if you just give a little bit of pressure through that capillary, then that'll allow some blood drop to come to the surface. Now, I like to wipe the first drop of blood away because there's a bunch of tissue fluids underneath your skin that can contaminate and sort of dilute the blood as it comes out. So I like to wipe that first drop away and then just get another second drop. And then as I apply the blood, just barely touch the tip of the blood drop to the uh, line there. You'll see that it soaks up all on its own and then the timer starts to count down. And in five seconds, I have a result. It looks like my glucose is 93, that's good news. And this meter even tells you green, blue, or red, depending on whether you're normal, low, or high. Okay, some of them do that, some of them don't, but I'm done. So I can apply pressure with the cotton ball or the Kleenex or whatever you wanna use, my finger, just to make sure that it doesn't bleed all over the place. And then that's it. Almost every modern meter has a memory and the number that we just measured will be recorded in here so that we can refer back to it later. They'll usually hold like several hundred readings before the memory's full, but you never have to worry about erasing any of them to make room for more readings. Once the memory's full, every time you check your sugar, it's gonna automatically delete the oldest number in order to make room for the new ones. Now that we're done, we're just gonna pull this strip out and throw it away. That'll turn off your meter. This is now trash. But as you throw your strip away, don't forget about this little lancet in here. We can open the cap, take this guy out. There's usually a little lip on there to kind of let you grab it. And what I like to do is to keep people from getting poked by this needle in the trash, I like to use this cap that we took off at the beginning and just stick it right in there. That way it's covered and uh, you can reduce the chance of accidental needle sticks. Now we really should change the lancet every time because once it's been used, it's no longer sterile and there's the possibility of infection if you use it again. To be honest, the most diabetic people use these lancets multiple times before they change it out and put a new one in. I mean, my patients come to me all the time, they're like, David, I need a refill of my uh, test strips. I'm like, okay, cool. You need some lancets too? They're like, nope, got plenty of lancets. I'm like, I have given you eight refills on your test strips and I've never written you a prescription for lancets since that first one. How do you still have them? They're reusing them, it's, you know. And look, I mean, it's not like people are dropping dead of skin infections left and right. So I guess what you do is up to you. But my official advice has to be that you ought to use a new lancet every time. One thing that you should not do though is let someone else use your lancet or use someone else's used lancet. A small amount of body fluid does get on this needle, so sharing them puts you at the risk of bloodborne viruses like HIV and hepatitis. Even if you think you know the person, it's not a good idea and it's not worth the risk. These things are super cheap. So that's it. You're now prepared to do something that's gonna very quickly become so simple and so natural that you won't even really have to think about it anymore. Getting past that first poke is the biggest hurdle. And I hope that this tutorial helped you to feel a little bit more comfortable in giving it a try and not feeling completely lost. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button. It really does help out a lot. And if you're new to diabetes, or if someone close to you has diabetes, or even if you've had diabetes for years, you're probably still gonna have questions here and there. And if that's the case, I hope you'll hit that subscribe button because Sugar High has a whole lot more answers that I think you're gonna find helpful. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.